We opened on a cutscene. My fellow compatriots, everything is going as planned. Speak for yourself, Arden. I'm stuck on this godforsaken submarine being led around by some four-eyed imbecile. Oh, come on now, grumpy muscles. Lighten up. Do you like screaming severed heads? Hey! Sorry, but I don't have a taste for such noise. Why, you little Judas! Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Soon we'll all have what we want. Aye, but what say this plan of this would-be king act would actually work? Thank you, Phantom. Gentlemen, you all are crucial to this plan, and when we succeed, we will all gain what we want. Whether it be money, world domination, an heir, or freedom. Follow me, and as prophesied, the rising darkness will be ours. After a long rest, our heroes had the Cathedral District to explore, as Cole explained that the King Regis had a secret bunker somewhere in the district, only having a vague riddle on where to find it. The Sanctuary of the King lies where the 14th King of Midnight Town will rest. This led to our group splitting up, Odorai taking the north to the Garden of Celestials, Viria to the south to the Cathedral, and Xander and Seth went to the west to the Old King's Grave, while Gola hanged back using Remove Disease to try and treat the Star Scourge within noon. In any case, let's start with Furia. As he entered the Cathedral part of the Cathedral District, yeah, who would have guessed they had one of these here? In said cathedral, he found rows and rows of pews, one after the other. Opposite of the entrance, he found a large statue that depicted what could possibly be an older Noctis, fighting a certain man of little consequence. Though in the pews, Fury noticed some familiar faces. Lightning and Vincent taking refuge from the heartless outside. We see the Cathedral District is one of the protected areas from the darkness, though for how long is the real question. This part is actually a bit fuzzy. From what I remember, Fury had talked and had a little bit of banter with Lightning and Vincent, but didn't get Odorai's money back. While Fury says he did get Odorai's money back. I honestly can't remember, and since then we've had a better system of keeping track of money, so I apologize on that note. After which he found an inscription on the statue that read, Insert re- Wait, what? Sorry, I forgot that I have little things that say for insert for me to start reading shit. The statue of what could possibly be Old Noctis reading The King of Kings, while that of Arden, the Star Scourge. Also, Furia found a chest which he then took completely along with the item inside. The item being Insomnia Mage Robes. Basically, just think the robes that the King's Glaive wear. They're a little more flowy. Now then, let's cut to Xander and Seth. The two entered the west side of the Cathedral District, where large ominous statues of Midnight Town's past kings stood. The two looked around at these statues, reading the descriptions on each one, uh, seeing that each of them were numbered going all the way up to the number 13. Though the two quickly noticed that there was a spot for a 14th statue that was empty. Also, one of them found a chest as well with a re-equipped ring, which I don't believe they've used since. And we've been doing this campaign for about a year now. Actually, it has been a year. It was like a year like last week or so is the time of me recording this, which is 9, 23, 2019. Now then, let's cut to Odorai. Odorai went north to the gardens, a beautiful place with amazing flowers and a large statue of a goddess. However, he wasn't the only one admiring the statue. Odorai noticed a black hooded figure standing at the other end, looking up at the statue. The figure explained that this garden was made in the honor of the goddess of light, Eos, whose statue stood before them. Also, that all light was said to originate from the goddess and that Odorai should keep that memorized. Odorai asked the man who he was, and he introduced himself as Alexiosin, though Odorai could call him Alex, before walking back the way Odorai had come. When Odorai turned around to follow the stranger, 
he saw as the figure disappeared, leaving only remnants of darkness behind. Odorai also explored down one of the waterways in the garden and found a secret underground chamber with the sixth celestial, Ifrit, chained with a quote that read, Fallen from grace of the light, but will rise with the oncoming darkness. Also gaining a ring of fire jump that he never used. The group then reconvened in the center area, each giving a quick rundown of what they saw. The group taking a bit of interest in Seth and Xander's discovery as they returned to the west side of the district. Investigating the area with the missing statue. That's when the group discovered a secret hatch with a magical barrier over it. The group pointed their keyblades at the door, unlocking it as they then ventured underneath the cathedral. As the group exited a long flight of stairs, they came upon a long hallway that had pedestals containing the ancient weapon <laughs> weapons containing the ancient weapons of past kings of Midnight Town. Cole giving them that bit of backstory. Though our party heard voices coming from deeper within, hearing two people arguing as sparks seemed to be flying from the room beyond this hallway. One of the voices saying, how DW and Goslin were still out there and dealing with those monsters. While the second voice reminded the first that King Regis had wanted them to finish their project if such a scenario as what's going on above them ever happened. That way they could get off world. Fury yelled out saying he could probably help if it's tech based, which made the two voices pipe down till they popped their heads out from the room and then introducing themselves. The first one introduced himself as Launchpad McQuack, while the second was Giro Girlus. This to explain how they actually came from another world on their gummy ship, known as the Dark Duckwing. Though thanks to Launchpad, it was crash landed. But luckily, King Regis allowed them the resources, and not only that, a place to work on the ship, all in exchange for them building King Regis his very own ship. The Gummy Gallia, or the Regummia, it went back and forth between us. I think we kind of set settled on the Gummy Gallia. After hearing what happened to King Regis and the now orphaned prince with them, Launchpad as well as Gearloose both decided that the party could take the Gummy Gali, especially, you know, to help Noctis get off world as well as the others. Fury was able to help fix both ships, though when the group decided to head out, Cole said that he and the others couldn't leave, since they needed to protect their home and that Noctis it has a bit of an adventure ahead of him to become the king that this world will need. However, he did say we could take the Gummy Gali as well as borrow the power of the past kings. Each of us allowed to take one of the royal arms, as long as we agree to return and help Noctis when the time comes to take back their home. Also, that the Ring of Lux given to them by Nyx will allow them to use the full power of their chosen royal arms by activating Armature, an ability that allows the wearer of the ring to call upon the, all the power of all the royal arms that the party wields all at once. And eventually we had to kind of nerf it a little bit, but, you know, we'll talk about that when we get to it. With that, our heroes said their goodbyes and got on the Gummy Gallia and fired off into the lanes between. Though not before doing a drive-by on some Heartless. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how the third session ended and where our adventure truly begins. Also, I forgot to mention that Karen was there this whole time. Uh, we kind of forgot to put her in the episode. <laughs> also, while Furia was fixing the gummy Gallia, he did actually find a chest that had another Zuria report. He had found Zuria report number seven, seven lights. The seven lights, natural cornerstones that protect our world. They come in many shapes, from princesses to worlds and even to keyblade wielders. When brought together, they are said to be able to do amazing things. For the world to be saved, these seven lights must be destroyed. D the danger looks behind you. There's a stranger out to find you. Go ahead and grab onto some ducktail. Woo! Go on the other!